the most obvious things are often overlooked. Yeah. They're taken for granted. And that's what you do with your clients. That's what marketing is. Like, what are you taking for granted and overlooking? You know, the, the thing about what we're doing, I'd say, is curiosity uh, is the first one. This one is more of, well, let's, let's see if we can identify this way because I was thinking about this while I was in the bathroom right before this. And some of the ground rules of what I'm trying to do here and trying to who our target audience is. So since you are like an intern and not just uh, uh, contractors may work with me, but the idea is that I offer you some type of value. You know, what, we're, what are we learning? Because you're supposed to be learning something. So the number one thing is I think we need to address this show with is what value am I bringing? Mm. You know, what value am I bringing? And that's what marketing really is. And what we'll be doing is like, what is the value that this podcast will bring? Not just you, but anybody listening to it. Because we're making a podcast just for ourselves. It's kind of a joke. Mm. Um, so the question is now, what value are we going to be bringing? Okay, so that's the number one thing that we need to identify as we're doing each one of these shows. The number two thing is, w if I was the audience member, what would I want to learn? What would I want to, why, why am I here? What would I like to learn? So, if, you know, the thing about public speaking and presentations is you're supposed to talk to, like you're talking or writing a book, that is, even. If you're writing a book, what's the book you'd want to read? Mm -hmm. And the thing I haven't taught you much about yet is a promotional products business. But if I was preaching to the promotional products business, that's just a limiting my audience base. So we talk about adding the value. We talk about what interests you. And a lot of these things like, what would you like to know? Or what would I would like to know as a newbie, like someone new to the industry with all this jargon and all these quotes of, basically it's the man behind the curtain type thing we've mm -hmm. talked about before. And this industry has been plagued by secrecy because a lot of these producers and a lot of these vendors out there and distributors mainly, and this is the term, the distributor is like myself who works with vendors and vendors is your source. The distributor basically does nothing more than slap a logo on a pen and upcharge you double. Mm -hmm. You know, a pen that costs 15 cents, they're charging you 34 and acting like they did you the world's biggest favor. Mm -hmm. But no one out there is telling you why you need to put this information on there. Why is your phone number on there? Why is not your website on there? Why is your phone number on there? Like who's your audience? And nobody's doing that part of the, the question asking. So that's the big thing I'm, you know, I try and do all the time is to try and figure out what problem I'm trying to solve, what mark I'm trying to hit. So if we fall by the rules of what value we're adding, what interests me to read or learn about, or you obviously, or anybody that would listen to this, what value, what interest. And um, I'm sure the rules will evolve as we go about this, but mm -hmm. that's kind of like the starting point of where does it start and what do we do and where do we go with it? Where do we evolve to? So as far as a general theme goes, I mean, it's, it's branding, it's mm -hmm. marketing. But lastly, we talked about this just in the previous meeting before this idea of time. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody can go play, my, you know, basketball, Right? That's right. You can go play basketball and we can do marketing. Yeah. Michael Jordan, you can say he was born with gifts. Well, yeah, he might have been born with gifts, but he also practiced eight, ten hours a day every mm -hmm. single day of his life and became a master at it. And just because anybody else can do marketing doesn't mean you're, what are you putting your passion into? What are you focusing your time on to become better than average? I'm not claiming to be Michael Jordan of this industry, but I'm definitely not an amateur. And so what's your time worth? So the value again, of what we bring, what you can learn here, but also realize what's your time worth and when does it make sense to hire somebody to do all the stuff for you? It has all the due diligence, all the skills, because you can only be good at so many things. You can be great at very few things. And that time's got to get spent regardless. So where are you focusing your time? And your time is an investment. Your money's an investment. So if you go back to the value again, you want anybody to listen to this they're investing time they're investing effort so let's make sure there's a good return on that investment 
Now for you, Sean, you've actually been sitting you know, across this table from me now for a few months in one way or another learning this type of stuff. And the question becomes now, what's your time worth? What would you like to learn? And I'm going to flip the camera around on you. So, oh, man. I mean, obviously, Let's I just came back from a, a trade show. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that here in a minute, what yeah. I learned from there. Lessons learned from that. Yeah, but what what things would you like to know? As far as lessons learned uh, from Ronan and from doing podcasts, um, I think on a base level, there's the technical aspect of learning how to actually do these things in the field. Like you said, we were talking with Troy a while back, um, earlier today even, and kind of the trial by fire. You, you do a dry run first, and then you go out and you actually do it. And I think that experience is very, very valuable, is, is learning how to do it in the field, in the real world. And that's just the base level is, is the technical aspect and learning the uh, specializations. Because you're right, there's like anyone can do anything, but you need specialists who are, uh, who can, uh, who hone in and, and key in on those uh, um skills i guess the question i'm asking you now is like from this if you were to listen to this this podcast this episode what things and especially we're talking about branding what things would you like to know about branding what would you be interested in learning personally what i would be interested in learning about branding as a newbie you're new to this yeah I mean, yeah let's go from i mean even even just as a newbie the wide world of branding where do you start where do you start? And once you do get started, where do you go from there? Okay. So where do you start as far as are you a person selling branding? Or are you a person as a company? Like what's your perspective on wanting to know? Either as a person wanting to sell branding or as a person wanting to do branding, getting in there, uh, jumping in feet first. Okay. So if if you were from outside the space and you were saying branding, you would think branding is what? Putting uh, logos on T-shirts. Okay. If, if you're outside the space, it would be putting logos on T-shirts, right? I don't know. I'm asking you. Because my perception has been jaded now, and it's hard to go back and not overlook the obvious, what we call it, that idea. You're so close to it, it's hard to see what it is you're exactly doing or the value you bring sometimes because it's just so second nature to you. you get these new habits. You take these new assumptions that everybody knows what you know, but even though there's no way they can know what you know. Yeah. So that is, what, that is what I perceive Brandy to be, and I think I've definitely skewed your view on a lot of that stuff. And um, neither good nor bad, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. So, and then if you were not, um, you know, brainwashed by me to think, you know, think like I think or, you know, always get subjected to my views. The question then becomes, what is it, what is it we do? If, if I was not brainwashed by you. Yeah. Uh, I would say what, what, what it is we do is, is, um, uh, just put it in simply just like getting brand names out there spreading the message of different businesses, companies, people, um, whether it be through videos or products. So branding is nothing more than the story being told about your brand, but I believe it's a story being told about the brand by your customers, your employees, everyone but you, the owner, because perception is in politics is truth. Just because you think you do something, but if that message is not caught or understood or conveyed by your customers, your clients, your employees, your mailman, then you're missing your branding message. And the branding is boils down to niches. It's a com culmination of a whole bunch of niches and community, and it curates a story. And what's that story you're wanting to tell? What's the emotional connection you're able to get with people? If you can't start with that end experience of where does this begin, then it's hard to figure out where it needs to go. Where does it end? 
where does the where does this journey end? That's that's the question that you've heard me say a million times. What's the end experience that you expect your your customer, your clients, your friends to say a minute after they're done with the the product, the service, to a week, a month, a year? What's the what's the next story? What's the next What's the story they're going to be telling, sharing? What's that experience they're going to be communicating? The more you can dial that in, the closer you can get to that feeling and the excitement of what they tell their best friend. What you know, Because if you think about word-of-mouth advertising, and this is from years ago. This is before social uh, media. I should probably look at the new number. But if you're to have a bad experience, do you know how many people you're likely to tell? Not off the top of my head, no. Roughly seven people. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's been amplified since social media, obviously. But if you have a good experience, you know how m many people are likely to tell? How many? One or two. That's tops. So the word of mouth is easier to get spread if you're doing something wrong or doing something bad. When you think about marketing and branding, like think about some companies that are no longer around that you had a horrible experience with. They didn't focus in on knowing what their niche was, knowing what their their strengths were, and playing to those. Versus being oblivious to them and then you end up getting yourself out of business because you just weren't paying attention or didn't care because you thought everyone else got it. The chain of command got it. It was passing on the message to message and therefore what was working for me should always work for me. And when it comes to leadership and it comes to being a, uh, a focal point of your brand or being the instrument of change in that leadership position, you have to remember that what you got there got you there will never keep you there. Mm -hmm. You always have to evolve. And so let's it's a good transition now to go into this what I learned at Yeah, lessons uh, learned at uh SKU Camp. Yeah, SKU Camp. First of all, what what can you tell us about SKU Camp itself? So SKU Camp is an our industry's promotional products. It is like the outlier of the outliers mm -hmm. convention. It's very niche. It allows less than 200 people in there, and that's including vendors and distributors, suppliers. Uh, so that means that the person that sells me towels, and there's a dozen towel sources in the industry, you know, one of them was there. And it's a chance for them to connect with distributors, which is like myself or AKA a buyer, mm -hmm. that we work with a company and, you know, say it's a big company like, know state farm or blue cross blue shield or something like that when we buy then their products branded and decorated for them that hopefully creates that emotional connection that we connect on a different level and then the thing is since we all have the same amount of vendors and we all have these same sources basically how do we create our individual approach and uniqueness that we're not there just competing on a price level who can get the cheapest widget who can get the cheapest pen right, or the cheapest right towel because none of us really want to compete with price and yeah we're saying price is extremely important but again if you go back to the initial question of this and this is the same thing i i do with my job here is what value does it bring mm -hmm. you never go to an investment advisor or you go to a financial advisor you say hey i want to buy some stocks right and who does that but you definitely go there and say, hey, I want to plan for my retirement or I'm having kids and I want to plan for a college fund. What do I need to do? And they're going to assess your, your, what you're able to put in, what you're willing to do. Um, you're able then to assess your risk level as far as, you know, do you want to get aggressive? Do you want to get into, you know, something a little less aggressive, less, less you know, more risk adverse? Like what's your temperament for return? Why is your branding and your business treated any way differently? is blows my mind you mm -hmm. never go to say hey i'm somebody that people literally say Dude, i want something cheap mm -hmm. well go somewhere else right and i don't have time to do cheap yeah because if i'm not making a memory if i'm not connecting with something then i don't want to do it i'm just that stubborn but it's also worked out well as far as like who i serve with my clients because i know where my true north goes like mm -hmm. there's some things i just won't touch like because there's no value being added and anybody can do that. Just order from a website. You know, you can go play basketball in the backyard, but you don't ever get to play yeah. Michael Jordan yeah. by being that level. It, like, you know, who? sometimes I go out and I, I I search for artists, you know, who consistently does some of the worst artists, uh, some of the worst art, the free ones. Yeah. 
I mean, that's you get what you pay for is what they say that. Yeah. You know, so, but I mean, you they look at the videos, look at the, all the stuff we're doing right now because I wanted to do it differently. I wanted to put my own twist on it. And that's all that business really is, is finding a way to make your own unique twist on what you're doing. Find a way to hone it, own it, and connect with it. That makes it a shareable way for other people. It adds value again. So when we go, let's go ahead and write into the, um, the idea of what, what I learned at SKU Camp. So I did something differently this time I've ever done. I'm going to do it showing you what I actually did. And I'm pulling up my, my whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer in note taking now. And I like doing the handwritten notes. But in a tech world, this is what I did. I listened to all these podcasts. And we talked about the Jim Quick podcast I love. And it's all about these brain hacks. Yeah. And then your mind works better when you handwrite it. But it works even better if you use blue ink versus a black ink. Was that the same as... Uh the same podcast that had the um, the guy who came up with the visualizing your best self idea, or was that a different podcast? Different podcast. Yeah, that's um, that's a different one, but also goody, old but goody. Uh -huh. and uh, that's uh, Ed Milet one. Hmm. But this is a uh, brain hacks by Jim Quick. Oops, and see, I just made a mistake there, and I can just erase that, which I couldn't do before with using on paper. Uh huh. And as you can see, I went and I did different colors here because on his notes he said you should take like a line I mean I'll show you that'd be the easiest way you should make if you're taking notes here's the thing we're talking about so we're talking like podcasting right now or we're talking about branding and I'm writing like a chicken scratch I'm gonna put this down so I can write it better so branding and this is the idea and the right brain says like now how do we use this so we use this in a way of telling our story, our story being um, messages. What app is this? This is just notes on it's your just iPad. Notes? This is just notes. So that's why I have the Apple Pencil because you can use them here. Wow. Just a few. So you can write and then you can keep scrolling down. And if I want to change colors, then I can change colors and I can put it in a different, different format. So I kind of took what I learned from Jim Quick and I learned how to put it in my own thing. So, and then. It, it takes the first word you put in. It, it read my chicken scratches podcast. It said, this is a podcast we're talking about. So what I did is I went through and I took each notes for each speaker about, you know, what it was as a person. And um, like some things didn't turn out to be much. But then I said, well, I'm using all these different shortcuts and all these handwritten notes like um, O-T-O or uh, like you can see, like when I use that, it says the obstacle is the, to the opportunity. That's what I that was going for. The obstacle is the opportunity. So when I have the OTO in these notes, that's what that means. Black notes equals the meaning behind what is being said. It's my emotional connection to what I'm what I'm hearing is what the right. black parts are. The blue is presentation notes. And then when you see uh, the time being in purple, that's the time recorded on the um, audio file. And the orange is the video file right. or pictures taken uh, of the slide, which means that if I have a little green or sorry, a little um, yellow dot like that, it means I took a photo to of the slide to reference mm -hmm. later, and then I use the time markers on the recording to go back and find it later. Uh, this is like a convention I was told, like go check out. Like this is a convention of conventions for marketing. It's marketing profs in in Boston. So when I'm listening to things, I'm also picking up on things that they kind of subtly mention because that's where they get their inspiration from. So that's what I want to know about. You know, I want to know about the things that got them going, got them fired up, or where they're getting their resources from. You know, the idea of anything we do and what branding should be is how do you put your own unique spin on it? You know, get down to the core. The core beliefs. There's like a saying from you two, there's only th three chords in truth in music. Mm -hmm. Every pre Everybody repeats the same three chords. Yeah. It's just what sequence you put it in. It creates your own unique sound and your own tone. You can mess it all from there, but the basis line we all draw from the same basis line. Yeah. How do you put your spin on it and make it original? And that's what that's what we do as we find what what makes you original. And then how do you tell your story? Mm -hmm. So then, uh, like the green thing, uh, then the idea sparked. So as I was listening to these different things, I had this another page going. And the nice thing about the iPad versus doing a notebook, it was easier to go back and forth between the note 
you can see it's all like right here. And then I was able to then go in here, like rough format, spitballing ideas, solopreneurs group, which I'm now working on and creating a solopreneur group with some of these people, you know, and if you have this idea, what's the growth potential versus scalability, you know, how fast can you really grow with it? And is it scalable? Because you want to do something scalable versus just growth because it kind of pigeonholes you. Do you want to work for your company or do you want your company to work for you? One of the brilliance of the of the iPad notes I'm just now realizing is that you can change colors on the fly and you can't do that in real life. You can't sit there and pull out like three different colored pens or whatever. Well, it's don't say that because I can sell you a pen that changes four different colors by clicking on it. That is true. They're also pretty big usually, aren't they? Some are, but some have gotten smaller now. They're really? no bigger than this and you just you click at the top and it'll alternate colors for you. Huh. And that's only less than a dollar to get that pen bought. So... Don't limit your thoughts about you what's go. what's possible, what's not possible. But just for my purposes, yeah, this is easy. Yeah, that's pretty easy. But then you also know that the handwritten notes, I scan them and I put yeah. them in Evernote. Yeah. And then these are going in Evernote too, so I can find them anywhere, not just in notes. So another thing I heard all the time was wear your vulnerability on your sleeve. You know, be vulnerable. Put yourself out. And vulnerability is something I've said over and over and over. That was a constant theme. Yeah. And you heard it mentioned earlier today. Yeah. So the obstacle is the opportunity there. The vulnerability is your fear. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what this is. And that's why you see it twice in there because you're vulnerable. So in order to be vulnerable, that means you have to put yourself in a situation where there is risk. Well, mm -hmm. that's usually the obstacle. People won't avoid risk. You mm -hmm. know, people are by nature, it seems like a lot of risk adverse. Mm -hmm. Where as you, if you know with me personally, like I hear risk, I'm like, let's go after it. Like, let's, mm -hmm. what can I do? How can I take it over? How can I accomplish it? You know. I have a different mindset, but it's been from experience of making lots of mistakes and getting hurt and doing stupid yeah, stuff. It's the story you were telling earlier where it's the, you've eaten dirt going 20 miles an hour on a skateboard and then getting up and doing it again. By the way, that's me at 44 years old doing that, not when I was 13, yeah. although I did at 13 too. I'm still riding skateboards and still doing stupid shit because I like that adrenaline rush. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that fun, you know, I, my idea of fun is different and taking on fears. If something scares me, I'm like, but why, why does it scare me? I want to know why. And then mm -hmm. I want to take the power away from it. Mm -hmm. And then somebody I brought up is one of the speakers there, John, I saw him outside earlier and y you can just tell he was nervous. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, something I, I learned from, uh, the Simon Sinek that the same part of the brain that tells you what you're afraid is also the same part of the brain that tells you excitement. The brain can't tell the two apart really. Mm -hmm. But you think it's fear because you're in this, this fight or flight idea. Very but, vulnerable state too, yeah. But it's the same part of your brain is if you're excitement, you have the same body feeling, you have the same emotion, you have the same sweatiness. Mm -hmm. So I told him like, just stop looking as you're afraid. Look at this is a new opportunity. You're, you're excited to try to take this on. Right. And, your mind can't tell the difference, so tell your mind the difference. Mm. You're not afraid, you're excited. It's an opportunity. And the same thing we start off with here is like, tell the, tell what you would be interested in learning, what excited you about doing this stuff, and share that excitement. Because at the end of the day, if we're not connecting with emotions, what are we connecting with? Nobody mm -hmm. wants to be talked to, mm -hmm. but they want to be let in, to let them know that they're not alone. Yeah. And, and it's what good branding does. So then, this right here, the criticisms, it's my twist on the norms, ideas, and status quo. Like, you know, I used to do a podcast. Or I used to do um, uh, a blog, and it was called Criticisms. I started back in 2003, hmm. and I just kind of let that go. But the criticisms, I kind of always stuck with it. And that was my buddy Moss who came with it. Uh, and then I don't know why I took y into YPO, your product offering maybe. That didn't do a good job right there. Conviction over 9.30. I guys, I, this I actually wrote in the wrong area. And then there are things like this is uh, top word Jay. This is Jay. This is that marketing podcast guru in there that has a great podcast or at least great traction and listenership. But he's just being curious and asking people and he's just been going out there doing different things. And it's not like he did anything, he's not doing anything more groundbreaking or less groundbreaking than me, but the difference is he's out there 
doing it and he's put himself out there in a vulnerable way and he's now positioned as an authority figure and he's public speaking and man, these are things I selfishly want to do. He's written a book. Like I want to write a book. That's why we're taking all these different uh, things we're doing and getting them transcribed so I can have shortcuts to writing my book as we're doing this. All right. Um, and then, you know, this right here is going through the, his thing is how do you keep creativity going? And I've naturally always done these things just because I didn't learn it in a book or I didn't learn it in a podcast. I just did it because that's what I, I learned I needed to do. Like that was my, that was my thing. Like that was just the way I operated. And turns out that there's not a lot of people think like that. I mean, I kind of know that, but why am I not sharing like all my lessons by lumps? I call it. Mm. You know, he doesn't have the real world experience I have. He hasn't been in the trenches. He's just been almost like a teacher. He's talking about what you should be doing versus actually doing. Now, at one point, he did have a gr you know a job in the corporate world, and he was that marketing and analyst. And I'm not saying he doesn't have the chops for it, but there's one person that's getting his sleeves rolled up in the shit and digging yourself out versus the person that's talking about the guy digging in the shit and getting himself out. Mm -hmm. um, and each one has some value to add. You yeah. know, I think he's definitely got some value to add, and I'm not claiming to be that I'm way better or smarter than him. I just have different experiences and different mindset. Different perspective, yeah. I've I've literally bet it all. I've been, you know, I've gone months without having any income whatsoever and, you know, scraping by and no plan B. I've, I've got my first, second year in business, second year business. There was time where I couldn't figure out if I can fill up the gas tank or put, you know, five bucks of gas in or eat that day. You know, it's literally been moments in my life. And, but I've, uh, in the same time though, I've also come from a privileged family. Like I've, I've always, my parents are middle class. Yeah. I've always had a, a safety net. So somebody can argue like, you know, you always had a way out. Like I, I had nothing. I was on the streets and you know, I known hustlers that are really high up in the gang world that literally came from nothing and made themselves multimillionaires. Yeah. And, um, what kept, what kept you going through those times? Stubbornness, really? Stubbornness? Yeah, I just, it's too dumb to know better to, to fail. Like, I just, you call it unwavering faith, but you just had this this voice saying, I can do this. Like, I know I'm on the right path. You just got to trust your gut. Like, the more and the faster you're able to listen to that inner voice, that gut of yours, and trust it and not fight it and not give in to the other voices, everybody else saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, the faster you can block those noises out and pursue with your gut and punch through. And as the obstacles come get thrown at you because they will be the challenges are going to be there you can predict a lot of them but it's like the idea of now why i read and why i keep learning is because the challenges will change mm -hmm. situations will change they'll adapt but how you not just react but control your reaction to them or it can know what to cut through or know what to skip over or know what to deal with not to deal with the faster you get at that stuff, the faster you can get to your goal and the easier or less lumps you can get through. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big thing is, you know, how do you survive and how do you thrive with the least amount of hiccups along the way? You know, you want to you wanna get across the path, you want to get to one side or the other and that mountain's in your way. Well, figure out which way to get to you over there fastest that's so not going to kill you. Mm -hmm. It might push you to death a few times but you're going to get that adrenaline rush you need and get the excitement and say, look what I just fucking did. Yeah. And sometimes, I don't know, maybe death's worth it. Hmm. It's that idea of that brave heart quote, I'd rather die now than live another 70 years wondering what if, or yeah, you know, what if I could have made a difference? What if I could have changed? Like you, I have a different view on things like before kids, I had never had a fear of death. Yeah. Now that I have kids, I definitely have a fear of death because I want to, be there for my kids. I want to, you know, these all these selfish things. I want to make sure they have a legacy. I want to make sure that they can be okay. Um, you know, I want to have a chance to watch them grow up. But if it means that I have them watch me be a shell of myself or this a cowardly bastard in a corner that too afraid to take chances, like what life am I teaching them to? Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I say you have to know yourself and who you want to be and then go for it and keep going for it.
and keep going for it. And it, it sounds stupid, but I'm telling you, the simplest things are usually the best things. And you can say, oh, yeah, it's kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, it, it is. But at the same time, the most obvious things are often overlooked. Yeah. They're taken for granted. And I try not to take things for granted. I try and just, and that's what you do with your clients. That's what marketing is. Like, what are you taking for granted and overlooking in these routines, these habits, these things you're not being mindful and grateful for? What are you not waking up and being grateful for? And you've got this great starting point, but then what are you moving on to to take it to the next level? Because, again, what got you there won't keep you there. You know, I said in the last thing, I would say it again, is this, because I think it's tr true. The Gandhi quote of, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. And again, if Gandhi was in business, he would have said, because if you don't create the change, someone else will, and the world's going to change around you. Mm -hmm. So create the change you want or get changed out of it. It's your choice. Do or do not. Your choice. There is no try. I mean, there's That's a lot of wisdom. Yoda than, than Gandhi. Well, no, that is. That is Yoda. But I'm saying like, yeah. but there is. Either you do it or you, yeah. or you, get, you don't do it. The world's not going to stop. Time's not going to stop. Yeah. That's what we kind of talked about earlier is that the- it Keeps on spinning. Your will, your choices, your efforts will never stop time. And it'll never stop change. These are things that are only guaranteed in life. So you want to create it, you want to make the most of it, and change your priorities. You know, and then it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, the, the whys versus the why not. Mm -hmm. You know, why this happened to me? Why not? What could I have been doing better? How could I have prepared? You know, and this idea of adding value and then what you do. So I seek out things that are going to inspire me and push me to think differently. And... Um, so when you see this whole presentation is very similar to this, that, and the other thing, that's what it boils down to. Telic or intrinsic. These are things that, what's the experience? Like, you, is it a intrinsic thing you're experiencing or mm -hmm. is it, you know, a, a telic being something outside yourself? Uh, but his presentation was very similar to mine where he talked about how you keep evolving. Well, the thing, the trick I keep doing is, is this, that, and the other thing. Like, mm -hmm. what else am I missing? Because there's always something else. And, you know, the other thing is, this will always be a theme, I'm sure. The other thing requires at least a minimum of five other things because that other thing is that wow factor. And what's wow for me is going to be always a wow for you. So you need to have, make sure there's always a couple other things. And as you're doing something, I'm kind of saying, what's the other thing I'm missing? What's the other thing? What if this is that? And then what's the other thing? Like, there's always a spin. Nothing's ever like, just at face value. And then, you know, there's other things up there like the Wistia and the interesting original series, the brand wagon, um, the trait versus the trade off. I heard something interesting when I was listening to Ed Milet again. He had Dirk Bentley on there. Right. And he was talking to his daughter about, I got to do something. And she said, got to or get to? Mm -hmm. Do you get to do this or you got to do it? You know, what's the. Either way, it's got to be done. But what's your mindset? Your is it happening to me or for me? Right. You know, what's my role in this? What's my accountability? Why or why not? So, these are the things, and there's always gonna be a juice to the squeeze. So, what's the trade-off? You know. Uh, and he says, keep like an exploration minded, but that's obviously these are my mindsets. I've already do. And then he's said, these are the wrinkles, you know, for these anchor points. These anchor points are. You know, the things of life cycle, and we'll, we'll go over this in more detail, but you can also listen to his podcast and get all this stuff. You know, but the way you alter is reuse, repurpose, replace, remix, refine. But I think anybody kind of doing something is always going to be paying attention, and these things will come habits. And that's where the real power comes in, is how you make these things habits, a mindset and a lifestyle that is not doesn't require effort. Mm. It doesn't require a lot of thought because you're just now conditioned to do That's this. Instinctual, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Momento obsessed. There's a. It shows like this video called "Dumb Ways to Die." Have you seen this video? I've I've seen those videos. Yeah. Yeah. So, those guys have come out, and it wasn't just a video, but then they also created mobile games. They have toys, and the big thing is their community. And then embrace it and made remixes of their music. Mm -hmm. And then they started taking on themes like holiday themes. And they started, you know, 
uh, really embracing the community and asking the community to do things. And you know, again, the holiday videos you showed. But the difference is, and the big thing is, they didn't get labeled in just one thing. They weren't just in a, a, a video. Well, they're video toys. And then the best thing that happened with it is that since there were safety videos and showed dumb ways to die, this was put out by the transportation community, the, the death of accidental deaths and injuries went down by like 80%. Mm -hmm. So it was actually extremely effective. Not only was it fun, it's something you embrace, but it actually had real tangible results. And that right there is what, if you're looking for that golden egg of branding, you're yeah. looking to connect with the community, you're looking to create an impact and you know be top of mind, but then actually create the change that you set out to, to go for. Yeah. You know, some things can go viral, some things won't, but the ability to know that you made a difference is everything. And that's really what we're going for is to figure out how are we able to make our difference by helping other people make their difference and their community can embrace them. Their community can understand that their message is meeting the minds and mouths of their fans. And then also like the journalists and that's where the brand journalism comes in mm -hmm. of what we do of storytelling because it should be able to go back and be checked. It's not fact checked, but make sure the stories are always aligning and it's not getting colluded like in a game of telephone. Yeah. And that, you know, as right before we were here, I'm going to pull this up real quick. Um, this is the power of promo and why I love it so much. You can see a text here uh, and I'm going to go into my buddy, Michael Sugar right here. Sent me this pen. It's like, Hey, this is a bizarre phenomenon in my life. It involves you. I lose pens all the time. I struggle to find one when I need one, except this one always turns up and has for years. And I, at first I didn't read that. And I saw, oh, it's a javelin pen. It's like, what's that? And I said, I know you gave it to me. It says it's the number one pen sold in the world. But the fact is, as soon as I read it, I'm like, wait a second. I made that pen back in 2011. Yeah. He's had this pen for eight years. For eight years. And this pen costs less than 17 cents. Wow. Now you're telling me is... And I hate selling this pen because I think it's a cheap pen. Uh huh. But the truth is, it writes great. It, it performs exactly what you think a pen should do. It will write when you need it to. It doesn't get all the, you know, the, you have to keep rubbing it and writing it down. The pen performs phenomenally. And it has lots of good branding space on there. So I do sell this pen. I sell a lot of it. I love this one, too. This has the right opportunities on it, you know. And then the thing that's different is, like, I love the click. I love the little stylus. Like there's little things like that is we, we talked about it. like the joy when people say like, Oh, mm. that's how you do it. Cause everybody tries to push this thing at first, but then you do it. It's like, ah. you get this little excitement, the little aha moment. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to connect with those. Emotions. And once you, once you do it once, or do you remember it forever? Well, then you enjoy showing the next person like, Oh, and using you watch them struggle for a second. It's like, <laughs> it's on the clip. Yeah. You know, there's a joy of like sharing that with somebody else too. But the, hold this up for our camera real quick. The the point of it is, it's all good. The point of it is, um, there you go, right opportunities. The double entendre right there. The joy of it is, though, in this case, this was an extremely economical option for a pen. Mm -hmm. You know, the pen costs half the amount as this pen. And it still brings this per person joy eight years later. Yeah. I mean that that is that's pretty crazy. Blows my mind, and entry funding, entree funding. So as a entree. company, I started. It was the take on like Kickstarter at the time. Gotcha. Kickstarter was eighty percent of the time of Kickstarter projects were un were funded were not delivering what they promised. Right. And there's no legal recourse for that because musicians and artists and that are naturally flakes by nature. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but the truth is like you're not business minded. You. You have this great idea, but you don't know how to execute it. So mine was geared towards entrepreneurs, and you know I learned how to code and the web development because the web developer I couldn't afford after the first three months. I dropped ten grand on it, and it still wasn't done. And then I dropped another ten grand on it. I was twenty grand out, and you know at that time PayPal wasn't allowing cloud platforms like this because they saw the the legal ramifications. Um, we had Amazon with it. I was an AWS uh, provider. And I got their approval to use theirs. And then I really wanted PayPal at the time because PayPal was a bigger one. But 
anyway, there was all these different roadblocks in there, and it just never really came to fruition like the way I wanted to, the project backing and all that stuff. And there was one uh, project on there. Uh, actually, I finally did get three projects, but when it's all said and done, when you get that resi residual back, you're looking at like, you know, of the $30,000 they raised, you made $300. And that's not a sustainable model of, I just didn't look into the scalability at the time. That's how you say these lessons by lumps. It's like, what do I know now that I wish I knew then? Right. And these are the questions I ask. Like, all right, so you want to execute these ideas? You want to tell your story? How are you connecting? You know, how are we marketing? This exper experiential marketing. These are things that go into every single question of what I do. And I guess this is a wrap up that whole surmise of, what is it you're doing? What is branding? It's this. You're executing ideas. You're not just storytelling, but you're doing the brand journalism. You're connecting with people and emotions. And how do you do that? But experiential marketing. I mean, you're, you're marketing an experience. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not feeling you're connecting with it, then what are you doing? Right. You're just getting by. And that's not a way I want to live my life. That's, that's not, not a way life. I, yeah. I don't want... Anybody I work with to have that boring, mundane thing. Life can have enough challenges, you know? Right. Why not find a way to bring your passion to whatever you do? And that's what I that's that's what I do at Ronin. That's what I do with my work. And hopefully I'm teaching you to do your own way of bringing your passion to what you do. You don't have to I don't think you should ever do what I do by any means. I think you should find your own way of doing it. But at least you can learn from my mistakes because yeah, sure, you you don't need to repeat them. You're more than welcome to, but be okay with the idea of not knowing. And it's okay that you don't know.